Is your den clouded in a funky, ethereal haze? Did she stop coming over because it smells like a stinkweed imp died weeks ago? Laying in den guard, Clump and Seal has you covered. Advanced Pride Mage technologies create a feral invocation against the smells of your litter box, so you can get back to the things that really matter. Pride Mage is excited to bring you Dengard, our strongest odor blocker to date. who seek to upset the balance must be taxed for such ambitions. Hello everyone, it's Deluxicoff, it's Saturday, and this is Propaganda. We are playing uh, Moriol Zero Umbra's recent 5-0 take on Heroic, and I uh, really like some of the choices here, so much so that uh, there's a lot of one-drops in our two-drop spot, so thank you for that, Little Fight Nim Chimsky. So um, we're running these two mana ties, but more on that in a minute. 17 lands, two of them cycle, because look at this curve. There are, I think, only seven cards, yeah, seven cards that cost more than one in this whole list, so it's pretty sweet. Anyway, it shouldn't be anything that really jumps out at you as weird, except um, we aren't running... Uh, who's the bald guy? I should know. Um, actually, I feel like a hippie. This is about the longest my hair has been in a couple years. Um, anyway, so we've got four Cartoos of Solidarity, four Deft Blades. We have uh, three Emerge Unscathed, four Ethereal Armor, four Umbras, and four Trailblazers, two Mana Ties, three Sacred Cats, four Sentinel's Eyes, four Mutagenic Growth, four Benevolent Blessing, and only three of the Sky Guard. We have a... Uh, okay, cool. Um, following Formula One recently, uh, pretty avidly with my brother. He's always been a fan, so um, our fa one of our favorite dudes has got pole position, so that was what that text was for. Anyway, back to magic. Uh, we got three Death Speakers, one Life Link, two uh, Crimson Alkalites, all four Journey to Nowhere, three Standard Bears, and two Relics. So Shirazamon, yeah, there you go. There's the handsome bald man. Um, Shirazamon, I got his... Uh, emote working well now so it I should have thought of that it, I, I was trying to mix everything up thinking or not knowing how everything was going to work out with all these emotes when i set it all up so it's just uh the, the three dudes here all set so yeah and paladin 19 and drew mcfarland bolt squad <laughs> yes all set all righty cool i gotta put my phone down or i'm gonna be thinking about that instead of this and this is what we're here for so anyway yeah, we're going to give this a try. I've seen uh, this run as many as four in some of the builds. I think uh, Paulo Cabrillo uh, from Brazil um, recently played one with all four of those. So that is pretty sweet. So yeah, anyway, you're on Twitch so much, Shiraz. You should have your own emoji. So there you go. All right. So off to the room we go. I got to remember to set this to two players because I was testing something earlier. And we'll make sure it's loaded up and we'll go from here. So anyway... Yeah, it's a pretty sweet little list. Um, very, very, very low on the curve. I mean, you put these over here, like I said, that's only seven things that cost more than uh, one. So even the sideboard maxes out at two, which I've always liked. And I kind of like these all-in strategies with uh, things like cards like, you know, Death Speakers and such. They're pretty sweet. What's going on with my... Oh, that's why. It's always that way whenever there is a match to play. Here we go. Close this for some screen real estate. And look at this. We're flooded. hey uh I don't know about this hand. I think I'm going to throw this back. We've only got one creature. Uh, but it does have evasion. But that's like half of our hand is uh, mana. Let's mulligan this. All right, we'll keep this one. Boop. And do we throw back the step? Do we do it? Do we do it? Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's, uh... Yeah, let's throw that back. As we'll lead off with our dude and go for there. Super Pooper 23, Roy Hayes. Good to see you, man. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Good afternoon. Back to you, Punk Toast Doobie. Lots of new people in the house. All right. Propaganda hype, says Roy Hayes. Thank you for thank you for that. All right. So I don't know how long our Death Blade Elite is going to be for the world, uh, seeing a wind scarred crag across from us, but we shall see. You too, Nimchimsky. What you having this evening out there in... Other side of the world land. Alrighty, man is right. 
we'll drop this down and hopefully it lives. If it does, we'll have a pretty good time outside of a journey to nowhere. Be able to keep it safe. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Suriname. Good homemade roast. Oh, interesting. Little fight should probably know how to make that. He's quite the chef. Save me some lunchtime in Texas, says Drew McFarlane. Every, all over the world. Reaching the globe. The popper fist whoop, goes all the way over, right? Yeah. Oh, man. If I had been getting into Commander, believe it or not, um, went out and splurged, bought a um, the Anya Falconrath uh, Madness. Really, really, really enjoying it. Very my play style. There's not retrace, but it feels like it because I can discard stuff so often, so much of the time. And yeah, I'm just really liking it. Very cool stuff. Okay, let's see. Do we keep it safe? Do we do this? All right, ready? As we get flooded here. Well, let's, uh, let's get our creature count right here. Rock here. We could take the Skyfisher out, but do we go all in with that? Hmm. Let's see if we can stay out of range of at least a bolt. Get rid of that Skyfisher. First strike. I just hope they don't have a um, journey to nowhere right behind this. Yeah, I want to use the ability. Let's keep this board nice and clear. Sometimes you can go a little too heavy-handed with the Death Blade Elite, but I don't want no synergy coming up. I'll try to keep stuff off the board and then eventually smash through and have a good time. Booyah. Here we go. Oh, very interesting. Had no idea about the Suriname connection there in the Netherlands. Yeah, see? Tune in for Popper, get a little history lesson. Pretty nice. The neatest things about not using my webcam like I did the first few years of this is if my uh, laptop's out of position, I can just move it and the whole show doesn't shift. It used to do that. <laughs> All right. The Vigilance crew in the house. Got some UFC fights on tonight. Don't think it's uh, worthy of buying tonight. Not too interested. Plus, my one of my favorite fighters, Brian Ortega, isn't even fighting. There was some COVID screw up with his uh, opponent. I don't know if he got it or somebody on the teammate, but they don't take chances. So, oh crap! A yep, little bit of a mini punt by our opponent there. My initial inclination was like, oh no, that's four, but it isn't. We're out of range. When I was working in southern Brazil, says Paladin 19, found the history of the Dutch settling the area I was in. Ooh. Everybody's globe trotting. All right. Let's just make these guys huge, eh? Um, and not put all our eggs in one basket. What do you think? Shall we? Well, let's let this dude have some vigilance. And we'll keep this dude back with this. Uh, might as well get this a little bit bigger and better. Attack! We've got the scathed backup plan. Problem is, if a uh, journey hits, I'm going to have to say pro-white and all our stuff's going to fall off, so I don't even know if it'd be worth it at that stage. I can taste the salt from here. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I tell you, speaking of uh, imperialist scum, the our our world, uh, or I mean our our leader, he's pretty embarrassing on camera. Man, that is just uh, there's there's some local radio out here, and they'll play like all of Biden's screw ups and little hiccups, and it's just it's very alarming. It's kind of sad that he's our leader. No political issues at all. Just I don't think he's all there. I think it's pretty clear. The last thing he, he was doing, he had to just, all he had to do is like read from a teleprompter and he still went off script and rambled on about some other subject. It was, <laughs> yeah, I know it's like a one two of embarrassment, right? Oh, there's a popularity contest. That's the saddest thing. 
Jack the Fury. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to start smashing here, folks. Boop. Problem with the Merge Unscathed in some of these matchups is exactly this. Coming over for Lethal. He's going to have to block, so we might as well not use the Death Blade. He'll have to use it on the little Warrior. To which we will give Pro White. Might be a little reckless, but why not? Super Pooper 23. Yeah, my least favorite of the Dem candidates for sure. We'll say no to that. He's going to block it anyway. Whoop. Just to stay alive. Alrighty. This was Boros. So we start off with a double U. I was going to maybe play some Rogue today, but I saw this list and it was a little intriguing. And I want to, I don't want to bring you guys a kind of a so so list um, with regards to um, this new uh, Azorius list that I've been uh, tweaking for this metagame. So uh, that'll probably be next week. We'll see. Let's just keep in mana tide to see how fun it could be. Emerge unscathed and blessing. I'm gonna lose um, two blessings, both for the curve, and we're we're already running unscathed, and um, I'll lose one unscathed just because we're up against another white deck. Yes, it's good against red, but what we're gonna bring in is two alkalites, um, which can grant protection from red, and I don't want to eat up too much of our uh, spots here. And let's see. Eh, maybe I put back in one one emerge. Yeah, let's let's roll like that and go from here. Boop. Mana tide. Too spicy to board out. Yeah, it's I always I don't know, if if there's such a thing as a popper elitist, that that always makes you kind of feel like, oh come on. But it works. You know, when it gets when you get stung by it, it's usually that big spell that you're like, and now the turn of the Oh, and then you feel like you you discount <laughs> grocery store i don't know it just feels like it's uh i don't know we'll keep good hand here i'm glad we mulliganed that first hand last game i think that was a losing uh, draw getting a wee bit flooded here i know paulo cabral's uh, list i think ran all three secluded steps in the same mana count we're only running the two and here we go all right i'll print out the cat i like I love the Sacred Cat. And the original Boros Boli. I know I've been teasing that I'll play the very original list one of these days soon. But And the new uh, Harry Potter set is um, slowly Strixhaven is starting to get unveiled. I haven't really seen anything yet that's surprising. There's some interesting things. They're letting, uh, there's like a three mana scry, but it's a lot of stuff sorcery speed. And the new learn mechanic is interesting if there's a lot of it. Now, if they reprint Flaring Pain as a learn, I think that's going to be pretty cool. But I doubt they're going to do that. We shall see. Well, we've got two dudes out there. I ain't going to... Uh, I'm just going to go here. They're going to have to do something to commit to the board presence next turn. Unless they've got like double, double Galvanic here, which we can save one of our guys if he uh, makes that same mistake or she. Who knows? But... With the moniker Jack the Fury, I'd imagine we are up against that sort of chromosome lineup. The learn mechanic, I haven't seen enough of it yet. I think it'll be awesome if they really print the hell out of it and it gets about as numerous as maybe Flashback. But for right now, I think they need to um, stop inventing so many mechanics that are similar and just revisit older ones. All right, I can go all in here. Keep that kitty cat alive so it can thrive. We've got a similar list to last week's show. Spare supplies. I got second in the Popper Classic uh, tournament on Tuesday with the Pestilence list. I lost to Slivers, but I also beat the same list in the opening rounds. But a lot of fun, a lot of fun. If you haven't tried those tournaments out, I highly recommend them. Very cool. We'll do this. Yield. These things can get out of range pretty darn fast. I think we'll just drop another armor on here. Wham! Wham! And come on over for a whole bunch now. We'll do this to here whenever you can. You want to spot the heroic because it gets that plus one one counter somewhat permanently. That's 11. No sense in wasting that. We'll just keep it back. A little surprise value there. Long time YouTube video. Hey, Epic of Dreams. Nice to hear from you. Love your gag ad productions. What is your main work program for video? It used to be Avid. 
Um, still use it sometimes, but um, Premiere is pretty hard to beat. The Premiere Pro, Adobe, and um, like Final, um, what do you call it? Uh, After Effects and stuff like that. Yeah, those are my things. But I do it professionally. At least I used to. I'm uh, barely working right now. I've got a little tiny, it's almost like a, a salt sprinkling of work each month, but it is keeping the lights on, but it's still... Still pretty uh, lockdown mentality out this way, so um, things are coming back a lot slower. So hopefully, uh, I'll be back to the back to the grind. I can't wait! <laughs> I can't wait to just have a normal day where I gotta get up and go to work and not, you know, kind of the what I used to think of as sometimes the drudgery of day to day stuff. It's like, man, I, I miss it. Oops, don't want to see that. We want to see this. All right, let's jump back in here and go for another one. Hopefully, we are has a little bit better luck in the next matchup. Let me go over here. We'll look at the deck list instead of me. Oh, our opponent's already showing up here. So off we go. Glad to hear you're getting through. <laughs> get your own face. <laughs> That's right. I got to get Toothmaker his own face. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. Ooh, that's kind of a gross hand. Do we keep this? Ooh, that's Mulligan. I said, mulligan, sucker. Oh, no creatures. What's going on here? Boy, I don't know if I can really afford to mulligan again, but I'm going to. I do need a creature. All right, we'll keep this. We do have two mana. We do have two creatures. I'll get rid of Scathe. And... Uh, this is tough. This is tough. I'm going to get rid of this step. I'm going to be too tempted to cycle that. And I want to keep our uh, threats up. Don't know who we're up against or what. Ha! Play our leg, says Roy Hayes. So I can get cheated out of my money. We've been there before. I'll be back to the league scene pretty soon once... Uh, or not pretty soon, I shouldn't say that. Once uh, the Tron issue is answered. All right. I play about one or two a month now compared to like almost one a day back in the day. Mm, what shall we do? Let's keep it on. Let's not invest too much in this little kitty cat maybe till next turn. We'll be gaining some life, which is very valuable against this list if it is what I think it is. Our cat might not be long for the world though, but our sentinel's eyes will come back as will the cat in zombie form. Thorn needs a hit. Yeah, what they got to do is not give... What was that, right when it... That new set from... Was that six, seven months ago came out? Probably longer than that. Gave uh, the... What was it? The Monarch Mechanic. It's like, let's give it to Blue. Twice. <laughs> and the best one. Like, just when you think... Wizards is thinking, they prove they're not. At least about Popper, anyway. But there's quite a few cards coming out in the next uh, 365 days from now, so we're going to have quite a few new decks and iterations and all kinds of things to talk about. So, Okay, I love this little dude. Always, always wanted to make a tournament-worthy shadow deck. One of these days. I don't want to invest too much in this, but I also want to use my mana and stay alive, so... We come over here. He can't block us. We can't block him. This is an interesting matchup. Yeah. Slayer's all about de devotion to black. I know I've said that before. Boy, if I was in charge of any sort of set or moving forward in like, Magic's design, I would... You know, there's so much mana fixing now. I think we need to go back to those, like, like Underworld Dreams style. Like, you know, that's... that's Let's give them some quality, but make them pay for it and commit, you know. All three black spell, or one and three black. You know, not this three and one black where Tron can just splash every best printed card that comes out. It's maddening. All right. I think if they had removal, they would have used it. Oh, Grang Sushi. Good to hear from you. 
is the Slayer. And this is the other thing. All these updates they keep doing every Wednesday, and they don't fix this. That is so hard to read. It goes from read or legible to invisible, dark blue on a black surface. Bad idea. I mean, would it kill them to just maybe have it like pulse with just a little illumination or something so that you know something's going on with the stats? Good morning, favorite popper guys. And <laughs> they orange sushi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe. All right, well, I'm just going to go all in here. Booyah. Let's smash in. We'd be in big trouble if we didn't have this little life gaining kitty cat. I wish we could block with it, but we can't. And I don't believe Death Speakers is really going to be called for here unless we see uh, all of his removals suddenly start showing up. Very cool uh, avatar here. What is this one? Planes walking to Kaldheim. That's nice. Really elegant. Yeah, Paladin. Or just, you know, I'm sure they, they have access to uh, programming lingo. They could probably just tell it to be the difference. Probably doesn't look too bad on other cards, but man, on black, it looks uh, awful. Ah, that poor Slayer wishes he could block for his team, but are we going to eat a verdict here? Sovereign's Bite. All right, that'll... Oh, all right, well, we're going to take this one down thanks to mutagenic growth if nothing else shows up. All right, we'll do that. Come over here. Throw this on the kitty cat. Meow. Sap. Pow. And we'll call that Suey Black. At least we're getting some variety here today, right? As we smash through, it's always fun to win with one mana. Oh, yeah. Feels like you've got a, a coupon for the metagame or something, right? <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. So what I was talking about is um, our lenience usually on this against black decks. But I don't really think it pertains here. We can't really block with it. And we can't really, um, of course, we haven't seen much of their deck. So I think it'd be silly to not bring in some of these. If our life link doesn't show up, though, we might be in trouble because that's a pretty aggro deck. So what I'm actually going to do is bring in life link. I'm going to take out, um, I think, all of our blessings. I'm going to bring in the death speakers just because. So our creature count goes up. And I'm thinking of bringing in a journey to nowhere. But I think we're going to be good like this. We've got built-in control. There's only two things that cost that, so we can really lean heavy on our uh, mana count being there. So, yeah, I was thinking about journey and Chimsky. Um, this just evasion's not really even needed. Let me just bring in one journey. Let's try that out. Boop. Yeah, a bunch of edicts. So we, we upped our, our creature count. And let's not forget, we've got Cartouche of Solidarity as a little token creature, so that hopefully can eat something up. What's cool about Heroic, though, it looks like it's a bad placement in the metagame, but it really isn't. Um, you know, I think everybody looks at Cannonade and they're like, what are you going to... It's like, you see how quickly it gets out of range, and even the uh, cohorts around it um, can share the love with the enchantments. So, good times, good times. You. And Little Fight, you'd be happy to know, all week... I actually went way back on my coffee consumption, keeping it to just at two cups a day. Haven't felt a thing. More of a habit as of anything. I can fill up my mug with water, and it's it's more of the physical ritual of in the morning going through it. So, what do you call it? Say my endocrine system is much more relaxed. Hopefully, it's not showing on the show. <laughs> I allowed myself on Saturday mornings, though. I'll allow myself four. You seem a little calmer. Oh, that's bad for the show. See, I got to be all hyped up. You, you, got to get some Ric Flair woos in here. Woo! <laughs> you guys haven't seen that thirty for thirty on ESPN. I highly recommend it. I think it's called Nature Boy. Very cool. Puppers in in the mornings. Ah, I gotta pump up the energy then. I don't want to put you guys to sleep. <laughs> Dreamer Dreamers Stango's reduced his to two pots daily. Yeah, it's probably at, at, at my worst. I probably had a full full pot every now and then. 10, 12 cups. Alrighty. I hope this opponent's here. Sometimes when the 
uh, sideboard timeout thing forces you back in the game, it's because they're no longer here. Hopefully they are, or they went off to trade somebody or whatnot. We'll see. Yeah, we've got um, fire, fire and Ice Chili Vodka coming up as one of our little fake breaks. Journey to nowhere. If you saw the very top of the show in uh, honor of uh, March being uh, Women's Month, I put together a last minute, I think I debuted it on Facebook about two weeks ago, but the Visage Queen. Nice little funny quote from Terry Pratchett on there about the reason why they call nature a mother. All right, let me uh, show the game log and see if our opponent's here. Hello? Chat? Are you there? Doot, doot, doot. Is it here? Come on. I'll give him another one. Okay. So we've got two creatures and a mana and stuff to do with it. We'll keep. All right. I'm glad they stayed around. But I always, ah, I forgot to bring in my little napkin because my coffee's still hot and I'm still getting vapors and it's making me nose a little therapy. Ooh, that'd be fun, huh? Sit around for this dude. Okay, well, until we show signs otherwise, uh, Death Blades aren't that good of a deal here, but might as well get something out that can withstand a lot of damage to match my card frame here. Ah! I find sideboard games more interesting than game one. Annoying when people concede without paying. Yeah, I think so too, Dreamers Tingo. That's pretty much about the only, um, that's pretty much the only, uh, uh, what do you call, um, drawback to, to not you know, playing leagues. I mean, you usually get a pretty competitive, spicy uh, set of opponents and such. And, um, yeah, let's go from here. But the conceit is that sometimes people just leave when they normally wouldn't do that. So, all right, are we going to hit torture? Yeah, we'll hit torture. Yeah, we lose. Bonk. Looks like they're just playing a little shadow variant of that one. Huh. I want to stay out of Edict Room, and we don't have our Cartouche, so I'm going to bring out Death Blade and just pass the turn here. Actually, I won't. I'll attack because we've got the Mutagenic Growth. And that'll mean we hit for three after the little bonus kicks in. Bonk! Unless we run into a, uh, I guess he could have a Snuff Out, but that'd be good news for us. Well, not really. But we do have to prepare for that. And, you know, Umbra will see something about that. Probably stack that up on the uh, Trailblazer as opposed to the Death Blade because Death Blade's ability is going to kind of be inert in this game. It's of the Changeling uh, can't block, can't be blocked, and Shadow and all these things. So I like breaking rules. Looks like our opponent does too. Zero Club. Pretty cool name. Right. Oh, <laughs> see that little fight? Yeah, I don't make it a thematic thing. It's just uh, pretty hard to say, given that we've got one as a VP, right? Making strides in the right way, that's for sure. But I get you. Yikes! We're getting thrashed. We'll vote torture. Come on. Where's our life gaining package? Okay, I don't know if we're going to have enough time to get there. Whew, let's get that Umbra going on. Next turn we can start stacking up. That would be f really fun to have a, a game-winning play with uh, Mana Tithe against Tron. That would feel really satisfying. Say no to that. And be careful with that trigger. Sometimes you can uh, untap something. Um, we have a new segment as one of our last breaks called the uh, Pavlovian Play. Meaning uh, sometimes your muscle memory or what you do 90% of the time, you can uh, kind of click right through it. And that's that's what I what I mean there with that provoke trigger. Sometimes you can do it on accident when you're like, oh, no, like, I don't know. A, a really obvious dumb example would be, you know, you, you do that to a Tim and then it untaps and then it pings you. And then, you know, you can you can get into trouble pretty quickly if you uh, aren't paying attention with that. So choose your triggers wisely. Yeah. <laughs> that 
dude's pretty shredded. Did I hear a bell ring? Uh, I don't know. Did you? <laughs> it wasn't here. Did you hear it on my end? Or does that mean that you unlock some uh, some prize? Oh, Pavlov. Oh, duh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Totally missed it. <laughs> Pavlovian reaction follow or preceded by a very dumb reaction. <laughs> I get it now. A little too literal, especially when, once I move on from something, I'm just like, all right, what's chat doing? And then miss the point. <laughs> all right. I got to I got to make a new emote with with me with like a dunce cap on. <laughs> OK, opponent, come on. I think they're maybe multi-queuing or something. I don't know why you would, but <laughs> I'm going to give them to the 18 even mark. This is just kind of rude here. Maybe they're going to the bathroom, so we'll give them a little bit of break. 13 to 9. Those tyrant's choices are really chowing down. <laughs> oh, boy, a dunce cap would be fun. Sometimes those emotes, though, they're just so little. It's it's a, quite a designing challenge. You can... Not easy. So our Umbros make us feel a little bulletproof. And our Deathblade Elite can eat an Edict. So it's time to kind of invest in our uh, Trailblazer here. Hopefully we can get there. Boy, usually when you go up against an aggro player or a kind of a speed low-to-the-ground deck, meaning lower curve, you get faster players. Not the case here. We are fighting through Syrup to get to our uh, second land drop here. All right, the Slayer shows up. Boy, we really need that life lifelink to show up. Come on now. I don't even want to pay that right now. Let's put this on here. We're going to be down to five. Yeah, I don't want to use that metagenic unless it's the kill shot, which will be soon. So that's seven, eight, nine. It would be ten if I did the mutagenic, but then we could be in trouble here. So I'll do this. Okay, I'll say no to it, even though leg legally you can't block even if you wanted to. But I wonder if that that would tri that would trip a phantasmal bear, I believe, right? Or does it have to be a spell? I can't remember how phantasmal bear is worded. I swear I remember killing it with that ability once, but. I might be telling tales out of school. Yeah, that was that's the one. I know I've killed a few of those with uh, mutagenic growths in the years. Well, let's see. I'm very glad that's a bazooka bog, just because uh, it's going to limit their mana. I think I know that deck, the deck's options. Um, Tyrant's choice is pretty nasty here, keeping it, putting us to one. But I don't mind it. What I really don't want to see is the uh, that vampire bite for three, because that might be even worse. So I don't know if that would keep them in it, though. Yeah, with the unless they they put out a creature that can block. I think we are gonna just get this one, depending on what this next spell is. That is a beautiful swamp. Let's check this out. Yeah, for a basic, that's pretty badass. Fear, and it can block. That's bad news. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to take three. Oh, but I can make him block there. We're still at five. We got this. Yeah. Let's put this on here. I remember trying to brew with Master of Unreal and Phantasmal Bear like ten years ago. It says Neath Three on Lights. Nice to hear from you. Hiya. A snuff out, maybe? Who knows? Attack. I'll make this go here. Say yes to this one. Bonk. So probably I've kept back with the Amanitide there in case they do have like some sort of a snuff out trick here. Which we'll see if they've got it. Yeah. Because I think I had... This was at 8 before. Yeah. A little mini punt there. It's a tournament. It might might cost you. Should have kept up in the uh, Manatithe. 
shows how much I play with Manatee. This is probably like the second time on the stream's history I've ever even looked at the card. I, it's usually one of those I pass over, but with a curve this low, it's allowed. It was terrible. <laughs> you got to do it. How many minutes are we going to spend here? You must block illegal blocks. I can't block you, but you can block me in this scenario. I remember playing the original build of Chid 3's uh, list with, with the prickly bogarts and or bogart. Can't quite remember how these guys, even without the spines, who would dare touch it? Goblin rogue, master of the unreal, master of the feast. Oh, those are just the options. Oh, very cool. All right, I'm gonna give this guy to the fifteen. I don't know what he's doing. Do we save it? Do we not? Uh, we save it. We lose. I'm just going to let this go through. A Lauren equivalent to Eventide Slippery Boggle. I don't believe that's ever been said. My goodness. Here's a Lord of Waiting. Speaking of Lords, our opponent is uh, quite slow on the uptake. <laughs> Who's the closest member? It's pyro time pretty soon. We're going to do it. 10,000 pauper points. Time to make a mess. Actually, I've got this cool thing uh, called a journey jar. It's a really nice, um, kind of like, looks a little grim, like an urn or something. But um, it's actually made for burning stuff, so I could probably do it in that. All righty. And we win. All right, guys. Well, sorry for the slow play by our opponent, but not much I can do about that. I'm going to be back right after this. Our ingredients have historic roots. Our water combines the spreading seas of Zandakar with the rushing rivers of Ixalan. Our grain is harvested from windswept heaths under Amonkhet's nourishing second sun. From the russet wolf potatoes to the straw golem berries, each piece of our mystical puzzle is then blessed by the order of the Ebon Hand, transmuting our prismatic ingredients into a magical elixir that is then held for five Teferi time twists. Then our Balduvian brew mages carefully select only the finest examples which are then exiled within our patented guild pack glass. Introducing Jaya's hot and spicy chili vodka and Jace's refreshing ice gin. Fire and ice. Experience your opposite. Available at all senior superstores. See what can take this deck down. We've won a few games, I think, with one mana. It's pretty fun to do. If you like uh, flooding, this is not the deck for you. Okay, off we go. Versus somebody. Let's see. Here we go. Ooh, oh, no lands. All righty. Throw that back. Mulligan. Two lands. We'll keep this. We'll keep it. I'm going to keep our lands on this one. I'll throw back... I'll throw back one Umbra. I got my spidey senses is saying that we're going to need two mana in this matchup. I don't know why. 
All righty. Hey, look at this. It's a mirror. Okay. Well, we'll copy you there. Or should we? We want the option to do the other? You know what? I'd rather invest in, in this. Plus, if he stacks up on this, I can prevent it later. So we'll, we'll rock like this first. I'm going to go all in on the Sky Guard in this matchup, seeing that uh, it's the best creature out of our 150 card options of these two decks, if I'm guessing right. Mulligan to zero sent me, says Epic of Dream. <laughs> sent you where, sir? Oh, reading backwards. I've had to stop drinking for a week so I can afford the new Isaac expansion out on Wednesday. <laughs> I do recommend if any of you are on the weekends or whatnot having a uh, heavier than usual night of uh, libations, make sure to sleep a little bit elevated. I know it can really help with your sleep. You can sound pretty terrible even if you're not of the snoring type you can uh some pretty bad bad nights of sleep quality breathing all that stuff so alrighty let's go like this so once we set up our dude hmm yeah i don't want to block there but uh it's gonna be scary how long can we last like this, right? All right, let's stick to the plans, Dan. We'll invest now. Hopefully, we'll be alive. We have the evasion. We can choose to block. Pretty hard to get trample in this format. And protection from white is kind of a uh, no-go zone, seeing that it throws off all the enchantments. So. Yeah, I tried the... Oh, yeah, I should be talking about that. I tried uh, the uh, Magic Legends. I was very impressed. It's a little too noisy and busy for me. Um, I ran into... I, I played it literally the f first few minutes it was out, too, and the chat was just... Uh, hopefully they've fixed that by now, but... Um, yeah, I was thinking, like, oh, maybe I'll play it on the stream. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's just... It's like a Skittles rainbow in every single corner and everything's just going crazy and numbers flying and stuff. And yeah, it's quite a visual wallop, but very impressed. I mean, for a free game and uh, for what it does, but it does feel just like Diablo 3.6 or, you know, um, what's that other one that looks to play like Diablo? There's a lot of them that kind of have that look and feel to them. And um, I just don't even think that the, uh, the magic part of it's not really felt outside of seeing a few Zendikons or Hedrons or whatever they're called floating around and people's names being familiar. It's <laughs> Baldur's Gate. No, there was, there was another one online. That's ah, going to bug the hell out of me not figuring that one out. But Oh, well, we're just going to take four here. Unless the life package shows up or whatnot, we're... Uh... We got one more turn of pain, and then we'll we'll be all right. It's gonna diversify his threats here. What's going on? What do we have here? Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Path of Exile. That's the one I was thinking about. Thank you for that, Matt Beasy, with the knowledge. Thank you for chiming in. Yeah, that's um, there's just so many like that. It's pretty amazing what they're able to. Do for free these days okay uh let's let's go for it we'll be taking at least seven next turn if i get um, vigilance on this dude it'll be pretty impressive for right now we've got one window here i might have to sacrifice this we'll see gonna be a close game it's nice yeah stick to me too Nim Chimsky. yeah I tried it it's it's a lot of fun I'll recommend it especially if you're the younger generation and stuff and I shouldn't even say that that's almost ageism on my part I'm sure there's plenty of people that like that kind of stuff that are plenty old too um definitely got the dexterity for it it's nothing like that it's just just as a you know you guys know how much I love art and everything and how picky I am about stuff like that I just 
there's an elegance to magic. That's why I don't play arena too. It's just enough already. I, I see what the cards do. There's, there's enough stuff to look at and think about and I don't need uh, all the visual distractions and such. If any of you out there are, have a gaming background or no, I should say how to build the program. Um, I'd be interested in, I'm interested in making a game actually. I just don't know. Um, I think I've got a killer idea, but I just don't have the knowledge to uh, put it forward. All right, that's 11. I think we just... I think our block uh, mentality is going to go out the window here. I think I'm just going to block. Because next turn I can Umbra and then block again. That'll, that'll keep us at least a little bit alive. Yeah, let me, let me just do that. I mean, if, if, if I stick to that plan and he has any trick, we're dead. Or uh, next turn we just we have to draw another... Yeah, I'm just going to block here. He came out a little too fast for my little plan. Initially, it was we're going to attack in the air, and then we're going to sit back and just uh, prevent all combat damage and hope for the best. But he went a little wide and uh, a little too much at us. So, Speaking of art, I really dislike the new border cards in Strixhaven. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't mind them too much. A little too loud sometimes. It's pretty hard to beat Kaldheim's little backdrop thing that's that's pretty badass i was pretty impressed with that okay now we got to be careful here we'll drop the ombra i sure wish this was a uh, problem with he's got so many spells on him i guess we could have called white on that and gotten rid of that but we'll choose to block with it now do i just hang out here no because the death blade could could force me to block yeah, we're just dead here. We can't we can't win by attacking. But they're gonna provoke that. We block that. We take six either way. Oh well. It's about time we lose. Let's see. <laughs> it's against the mirror. Mirror. This way. Uh you could say Heroics never lost today still, even if we lose. I showed to my son Nils, and he did not believe it was a real magic card. Oh, the new Faithless Looting. Oh, I, I know what you mean. I, I think I agree with you, Shiraz. Some of, the, some of the, I think the bonus art or the, the alternate art packs and stuff, they're, they're just going too far. At the top of the show, I showed... Um, Twitch regular Clug Alters, who's a great, great artist who modifies and alters cards. Thus, his name, Clug Alters. Um, go check him out. But um, yeah, it almost looked like some of his stuff where it's like he does he does that to go off these tangents. But man, and I know they're rare and they're, they're not going to see regular play and such. But come on, target this. All right. OK, he's got us here. Let's go to sideboarding. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Standard bear would be pretty interesting here. Journey to nowhere would be good. I'm going to get rid of Blessing. And I'm going to get rid of Emerge Unscathed. So we'll go for a Standard bear and probably all the journeys. It's a pretty high curve for this list. But I think I'm going to go like that. Anybody got a problem? Man, I'm a bit distracted. It's a close game. Should pay attention to the game, sorry. <laughs> I think we're good here. Yeah. These sure are fun. If you ever play these, remember too, you can target any creature. So back when uh, Tribe was a thing, it was always fun to have these out against Tribe because Inside Out is a red card and you would target the Tribe and spoil a lot of people's days. So it's pretty cool. All right, here we go. Boop. Got a little bit of a defensive stand package. We'll see where we go. I don't like the uh, 
protection spells in this just because uh, most of the time you end up holding them for like an aha moment that kind of feels underwhelming. Don't get me wrong, there's there's sometimes a benevolent blessing in, in response to a opponent's creature can actually make a bunch of stuff fall off, but I think it's better to just uh, play with this dude, especially when we have this backup. All right, we'll keep this. And this is just game plan 101, bring that standard bear out as soon as possible. It's nice to have that mutagenic backup too. So I have never seen that emote before, a little fight, but the only time I'm on Twitch is during this show. So I try, I try, I'll, I'll tune in and it's usually somebody playing or pretending to be a DJ and playing music at the same time. And I'm trying to listen to my music in their show and it's like, ugh. I'm actually, like I said, been playing a lot of commander with my son so much more competitive than my old infect build was i tried i got him maybe two in ten games but his deck kept improving and mine kept getting worse and so there you go well because of the mutagenic growth i am going to drop the standard bear this is gonna be tough late to the party but here for the fun mtm tack one of our favorites joining us thank you my friend we're playing heroic heroic is not lost a single match or game, but I have. Okay, that sucks. I guess we keep it alive. I can use another resource. Or build a turn on it. It's not going to keep it alive much longer. It implies maybe we have another one. Keep this tempo down a little bit. Might as well at least be able to trade resources. Really like to keep that bear alive, but I don't see it. Oh, you're building it soon in paper. Very nice. Pretty cheap. Pretty cheap. Now, Paulo Cabral from Brazil has a pretty cool build. He runs all four mana ties. We're only running two today, so Let's see how that goes. We have been provoked. We're waving a flag. We're supposed to be the prov provocateurs. Well, hold on. Do I have to block? Yep, yeah, I do. Bonk. Come on. Spoil the turn. We don't want any more mana. That's what I didn't want to see. An investment. All right, another standard bear. Come on. Whoop. That's not so bad. We'll play this. And got shot down. I like Gut Shot in the sideboard. I think my version of Heroic has it. I think my favorite version of Heroic is actually 99% similar to Methonical's last uh, placement with it. I really like that build. All right, so we have Sky Power and Evasion. Will it be enough? I want to see those standard bears early and often in this matchup because... You don't get to mid or late game with these decks. Somebody wins really fast. Opponents a little flooded over here, looking for answers. Got to be careful of the Celestial Flare play. If you can bring that up, one of my mods, I'd appreciate it. Just for the uh, uninitiated. But with one mana open, we're not too worried about it much. Hmm. Curious. What could this be? What is this new devilry? We'll rock here. Should we diversify our threats or go all in with this dude? Hmm. We'll go here. Thank you, Nim Chimsky. Appreciate that. Attack! Whoa! I think this is going to go to game three if things keep proceeding in this manner. We're flooded in the skies and in mana. <laughs> it's a card that's often overlooked. Especially these go tall strategies. It could be quite the backbreaker. Ouch. Well, we still get our counters, and our men still stay there. It's not too devastating. Strange call in a mirror matchup, seeing that it hits all your stuff too. I mean, we only lose two two bumps. 
not too worried about that. Where is our vigilance? We need some of that. I hope they don't get it. <laughs> Oh, a Ric Flair altar of Celestial Flair. That'd be awesome. Great idea. All right, we'll cycle this. What are we getting at here? Let's go like this. Let's keep our dude nice and fat, just in case they've got a, another gut shot there. I don't want to walk right into it. Come over for six. We get him next turn if things keep rolling this way. That gut shot's making him pay. Tularn. I used to use that avatar way back. I think when it first came out, and then once Word of Command came out, I was like, oh, minimalist. Here we go. Can barely see it. I like it. Flare can be a savage after combat damage. Yeah. Oh, there was a really cool list if you go to our my facebook page deluxikov on facebook um and you get are really patient and you go back like eight years there was a really cool mono white screen grab deck list i took um i think all it used was guardians and then it had what you're talking about dreamer stango which was just pretty much like a best of white's removal but it went all in and quicksand everything and it 5-0 it's pretty cool I really want a life link in here. Get rid of a mana tithe. I'll go with the life link. Here we go. All right. Winner of this wins it. LW. Let's see what we can do. Man, it's cold in here. I got a little candle going. I should warm my hands by the candle. Woo! It'd be funny to come up with. We shouldn't suggest it to wizards like a W, like a World Wrestling Federation expansion. <laughs> you could have Ric Flair could be a uh, an, a uh, planeswalker. That'd be pretty funny. All right, we're scooping this Mulligan. No <laughs> Mulligan. No. All right, we'll keep this. We have life gain. Uh, I guess I'm gonna lose an Umbra. And a plane. I really want to keep that journey. We'll draw another plane. We have life gain. That'll maybe keep us in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gark with Randy Savage art. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Might be fun if you head on over to uh, MTG Cardsmith and you know how you can design your own set and such. It'd be a pretty cool take. There's the sacred cat. Nothing wrong with that. Hulk Hogan. Probably be a green card just because of the word Hulk, right? And you could have a little instance like off the top rope. <laughs> but I really wouldn't mind seeing is it says Little Fight, a really high tech world like Star Wars, Cyberpunk, or Tron. Hmm. If they did it in an elegant way, it'd be pretty cool. I mean, um, what was that? Uh, what's that realm with all the gadgets and the little, like, eighth wonder of the world sort of set? What was that? Aether, not Aether Bolt, um, Kal Kaladesh. That was kind of like that. Okay. I hate to do this. Let's put this on here just in case. All right. Attack. We just need a plane, and we're in good here. Save that mutagenic for some other shenanigans. Yeah, there's some people, but my son has, like, I think he's got probably upwards of about 90 custom cards now. He's, like, making his own set slowly, just, you know, here and there, designing and stuff, and be fun, you know. Printers are so good anymore, you can just do that, and... I think our opponent's overboarding here a little bit at the cost of their own tempo. Easy for me to say. If we lose, then it was a good decision, right? But It's like, especially with that 
that radiant spell last turn it's like uh that's like half your deck you either have to play really slow it off the gates to do it and then outside of me targeting like the cat or the deathblade elite you know the heroic trigger still leaves the counters so i don't know feels a little underwhelming I'm not gonna attack okay it's interesting come on let me drop a plane here that'd be so sweet plane plane come on all right thank you deck it's nice of you to listen to me Whoop. We could wait, but I'm not going to. He's tapped out. We've got clearance. Let's use it. Bonk. Attack. Yeah. Meow. Yeah, my wife, such a sweetheart and quite a uh, tech-savvy lady. She made this... Uh, Microsoft Word document that I can drag in cards and set it to a size. And then when we print, we can print proxies. So like if I want to play with, I don't know, Commander and we want to try out a card that's like $300 or something like that, we can at least see if it's worthy of it or whatnot. Obviously, you can't bring it to a tournament or whatnot, but for tabletop. But you could do that with your own set. Our printer's not all that great, but it does the job. Yikes, I don't want to see that. Yes. Our journeys are paying off. It's too bad we're not hitting harder. That ethereal armor was out. We'd be uh, netting the benefit of that and swinging for a lot more, but that fragmentize was pretty well timed. Yeah. Pretty impressed by how much our Char Belcher list is getting some love on YouTube. Boy, I think it's up to almost like 3,000 views. It's pretty good for just a few weeks old, at least for this streamer. I know that Professor and other people would probably just go, Oh, 3,000. I get that in the first five minutes of an upload. <laughs> Must be nice. As we go, we've got our own dude. Do we use it? Uh... Hmm. Let's bring out the guard. We've got plenty of creatures in our hand. Our opponent's flooded. There's the Star Wars link. Thank you for that, Shiraz. Any of you... Far, far away fans out there. I have to say, when I look at look at them really critically, I think Rogue One is probably my very favorite out of all of them. Even Empire and, you know. Does anybody know how to find the original Star Wars? Because Lucas has desecrated his original so badly. I mean, they even, as a Boba Fett fan first, I was appalled when I watched Empire on uh, Disney Plus a couple months back, and they even they even changed Boba Fett's voice to what it was. Or, I mean, to, they overdubbed it, from, and that was the whole point. When he says, you know, when he bites back at Vader, and he's like, "He's no good to me, dead," and it was like, "Whoa, who talks to Vader like that?" And now it's like, "He's no good to me, dead," and it's like, <laughs> "Come on, just neutered Boba Fett." Just it's like leave your. <laughs> Leave your creation alone. Ugh, it's maddening. I'm just going to go wide here, guys. Get out our own dude here. Yeah, I used to have the... Oh, I think I do have the VHS somewhere, but it's like, God, I'm watching on VHS, but I guess you almost have to. Cause, boy, they're, that is a safely guarded secret. I'll chance the flare play here. I guess I should just come at him with the cat too, but I'll try to throw a death blade at him and hope for the best. Oh, thank you for that, Dreamer Stingo. That'd be cool. Yeah, because uh, I keep trying to tell my wife, because, you know, she saw it, but she's not that into it. Actually, she is kind of now. But she doesn't get the whole Boba Fett thing. And I'm like, nor could you the way it's edited now and, and overdubbed. And man. It's just way too much 
after polish on it. Crazy. Do you remember when mag wizards made real made magic in space? I do not. Okay. I'll take that bet up. Let's block. We've seen gut shot. Do we just trade our dudes here? Protection. Our target creature gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. Hmm. Well, that's cute. Well, here's my protection. Hmm. <laughs> Has he got a gut shot? Those two journeys did some work. This is kind of a uh, puke style deck, meaning you just your opening hand is usually bleh, and it's out and everything's on the table and not in your hand and you're hell bent pretty fast. So cards like Journey and stuff can really swing the uh, swing the tide greatly. It's our longest game yet, the mirror match. Space the convergence. <laughs> Both creatures live. Two spells down. What's going on? This is an interesting call because it says target creature. So you can uh, have some fun with that. Well, I could attack here. Yeah, I'm just going to attack. Yeah, let me do that. I don't need to do that. Nope. Let's just gain some life. We'll hold on to that journey. Or do we just invest in another Sky Guard? So we're going to pass the turn anyway, and I can't play Journey at normal speed. And volume in the air is a good thing. So I'm going to I'm going to play the Sky Guard. If he's got some cool trick with Deathblade and takes out one of our Sky Guard, that's cool. Then we'll just Journey it next turn. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, it's playing their uh, heroic, awfully defensive here. Okay. I ain't using it. <laughs> Bonk. And here we go. And yield through this turn. I sure wish they would move this concede and yield. <laughs> They're like right on top of each other. I think. Some nights with a bit of vodka. I've had a few auto concessions where I'm like, wait! <laughs> I tilt my screen back a little bit here. Have it looking up at me. There's what I was thinking would have happened. This is uh, that side of the tempo play here where, you know, the heroic player is kind of up against it. It's like, yeah, you want to clear the board, but you also want to do some damage. We're at 23 and. They uh, get that mop mentality where they want to take stuff out as opposed to just do damage. Good option. Where's our standard bearer? We brought in three. Of course, we're only 12 cards in here. All right, well, I have to block. Hold on. Did he make me have to block it? Yeah, that's why it untapped. Okay, I'll do that. Doesn't have trample, so there's no need to go all in here. Now, they probably have a good creature that they're guarding with that play. Nope, they just wanted to get rid of our death blade. Interesting. All right, well, we'll get rid of yours, too. He does it in response here. We can eat our own uh, trailblazer. Since we've got another one in hand and it's not anything invested in it. Boy, talk, we're playing a very weeny game. Our enchantments are all falling off. <laughs> All right. If you do have something like this, you want to play it before this goes on the stack so that I have to grab my own thing for you new players out there, but most people know that. We've had a pretty fun month of decks. Very successful. I think we've 5-0'd multiple times and had a bunch of 4-1s, uh, too. Like I keep promising, we will play Rogue pretty soon. Attack! Raw! Even with our zero, he's got to get in on the fun. Yeah, I think between the Fragmentize and the uh, uh, 
what's that radiant blast? What's it called that choose a color? And I mean, it would work good now because you'd get rid of journeys, but when like 30% of your list is, is the same thing, I don't know about that plan. That's a tech. Keeping our life total nice and healthy here. It's not a very uh, eventful, heroic matchup. We're, we're both just on life support with little meek creatures, but... Oh yeah, leave no trace. That's the one. Pretty hard to beat that for enchantment removal. Thankfully, they give it to white. Okay. And gets one back. Fragmentize showing up. Happy to trade here. Unless they've got some way to boost it. Alrighty. Oh, darn it. They're back in it. Uh, we do have one more journey. If any of our tricks or enchantments show up, how good would a mutagenic growth be right now? Okay. Well, let's do this. Yeah. I'm going to come over with the cat, too. Um, in case there's a Celestial Flare. Uh, I don't know. That would... What do you guys think? Attack with two things? I'm only going to hit for one if that goes down. Yeah, I'm going to play around the flare. Yeah, I've never been a fan of the Devout Harpist. I've seen it in a lot of lists. Awfully slow. But who knows? Maybe it's necessary. Oh, they got a mutagenic. Darn it. Well, at least our angel will survive. They have to have mutagenic here or, or something like it, right? <laughs> Pro white. The whole reason I don't bring this in. Bye bye, lifelink. Oh, wait. No, never mind. <laughs> that was the old way. Chow Mano, right? That's right. Note to self. The total oversight on my part, just because of the old Chow Mano uh, hangover. That's why Benevolent Blessing is better. Yeah, I've got Standard Bear access, but I think I... Uh, the Emergence Scathe I definitely think needs to go out in this matchup, but Benevolent Blessing definitely probably should have kept about two of them in this because... Like I said, been playing this game so long, I'm so used to the Chow Mano days, and I've loved Benevolent Blessing. I've made like 30 lists with it, but boy, they're playing defensive for a heroic player. Ugh, come on, can we get some offense here? That's better to... Less history, more mystery. Here we go. Down to the wire. I know, speaking of standard bearers, where are they? They're getting their flags repaired. <laughs> yeah, I think the Devout Harpist against like Hexproof or the Mirror be a wee bit slow, especially... The... Who knows? It's a constant answer. answer. I've always been a fan of Aura Fracture. If you can bring that up in the chat, I'd appreciate it. But in a deck that runs this lean, probably not. Okay, life's coming back online. This is turning into a fight. Who can draw better cards? And that's a start. Let's throw it on here. Yeah, I've always liked that. When I played in the um, attack when I played in the uh, popper that big event up in uh, uh, Seattle at Card Kingdom the one that was um, not televised but you know with uh, ah what is that called anyway it's that big special event I traveled for to Seattle ended up getting second place but um, what was my train of thought on that uh, what was I talking about Ah, I totally forgot. Oh, Aura Fracture. I remember um, 
the quarterfinals or something, and I was going up against Hexproof, and I eviscerated my lands. I had like one plane left, and I, I just got rid of everything. It was just like, yeah! I hope they have a Celestial Flare. Just playing around it, baby. Woo! Come on, what you got? Uh-oh. Is there another pro-white spell headed our way? I have never heard of that Dreamer Stango. What's it do? Can you bring it up in the uh, little card readout thing? If it's in Magic's history, it should come up. Sacrifice and enchantment, destroy target enchantment. Interesting. Oh, and three UU, you can counter an enchantment spell. Fascinating. Oh, come on. I just want a standard bearer or another journey would be really nice. Actually, it wouldn't. <laughs> Can't even target that thing. Yeah, if they have a standard bear, or if we draw one and they have another Benevolent Blessing, that's always a mean play, too. You could just throw it on there. All yeah, right, well, they can block that, pro-white it. Okay, this feels good. Hmm. Let's put this on here. And stay back, I guess. They attack us. They leave themselves open for, looks like a kill shot pretty soon, depending. It's kind of a race to find ethereal armor at this point, right? There's one in every Ice Age booster pack. Very nice. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm Propaganda here on Saturday, playing heroic. Let's start diversifying. Wonk, wonk, wonk. <laughs> Box there. It gains three. We hit for three. We gain one. Next turn, I'll start attacking. Just It'll start making math sense. I tried yet again to make uh, Imperial Armor work, the one and two white for every card in your hand. Creature gets blank, but there's <laughs> just so many better ways to design a deck that can do that. You're looking at one of them right now. I just, ah, I want it, I want it to work. I get those little eureka moments. Sometimes I'll be driving somewhere on my walk or sometimes in the middle of the night I'll wake up and I'm like, yeah, and then I could... And then you always come to the conclusion like, or oh, just do that. It's like, yeah, I guess so. Not looking good for us. Uh, yeah, this is not looking good. They're slowly eking their way back in here. Our standard bearers are hiding from us. At least we're not getting flooded. Dex land feels really good. I thought it was a bit aggressive to go uh, two steps in a 17 shell, but it feels just right so far. Only three games in. All right. There we go. Well, I guess we can do a little surprise value kaboom in here. Hiya! Let's go! Darn Deathblade is out of touch, and that one's pro white, so we're just trying to do a kill shot here. He's got a block there. Probably blocked there. Uh, it still doesn't make too much sense. And it went on time. Ah, it's not that big of a difference. Two minutes, maybe. That could be the case. Let's target this dude. I'm trying to go wide here now. It's kind of our only way through this uh, gauntlet of blockers. And I could put it on this. All he does is pay two, and we waste a spell, take two life, and 
save a 1-1. One, one. I don't really care about. So I'm going to keep this as a mystery here. Now all our guys kind of invested. Problem is he gains all that back, so we only hit for three here. Outside of a uh, top-decked awesome card on that Death Blade, I th this is a nice close game. I'm happy this is happening. We've had some blowouts already this morning, so... Yeah, that galvanic blast for two and sent our first Boros player packing. So <laughs> raise your hand if you've been there. I sure have. Yes, I know. I did mention playing in paper. Ooh. I'm sure it soon will be. MTM tat with the knowledge. What were you playing on Proper Classic Tuesday, MT? I know you and I are usually pretty regulars there. I was surprised. Uh, I'm second place overall in the, um, I guess the Popper, I, Popper Classic Tuesday. I think ESO is the only one in front of me. I was like, whoa, I never, I just accidentally, I was looking for a different stat and I never even know, knew there was a leaderboard. And I was like, whoa, it's like something like 900 or it, it goes on and on. It's like an ocean of players. That was a nice surprise. A few weeks ago, went with Disciple Affinity again. Yeah, that's kind of your little pet deck. You're damn good at it too. All right. Down goes the kitty cat. I'll block here. And I guess I'll block here. He's got to take him out of combat and then we save our cat. Somehow got punked out by burn. Isn't that the truth? I know I Little Fight complains a lot about, you know, burn hate. And there is a lot of it. But you, you have to have it right now. There's there's been some times I've been embarrassed too where I'm playing like I don't know tokens or something and with soul sisters and you still lose to burn you're like god damn it <laughs> burn can beat weather easy if you never draw it Cooper the red yes hey reading backwards here okay he gets pro white down goes our kitty cat I think I would have played that on my sky guard but oh no that would have been dumb and I get in for free anyway, but down goes our cat. Nothing wrong with that. We'll get it back. He has to block there. Blocks there. Dude gets through. All right. Looks like we win here. Let's pull this back unless they've got some cool, like, prismatic tech or something. I don't know. We're going to attack. This is how you play. You play aggro when you're playing aggro. You don't play defensive. PCT hasn't had tons of players recently. If anyone's considering it, go for it. Yeah, we usually run the ad too, but... Boy, remember, what was that, about a year back? I think right when the pandemic hit, there was a, there were like three weeks in a row where there were like hundreds of people. It was like, whoa, what's this all about? Bam! Krakatoa! I always forget that that life gain happens at exactly the same time. Forget what card I'm thinking of, and that used to go on the stack with that. All right, one, two, three, four. You know what? I'm going to break the mystery wide open. Just in case I draw another spell, I can go super wide here. Man, that life link artwork is off the chart. So cool looking. Man, Therese Nielsen. What an artist. You're thinking of Armadillo Cloak? Yeah, and that's why, Cooper the Red, I, I was traumatized by Armadillo Cloak. Um, when that came out in Invasion, showing my age, I was playing a, a team event for some Pro Tour qualifier in real life, and uh, I had a Shivan Worm in that, and um, or my opponent did. There was some scenario. If Toothmaker's still in the chat, he can, he can explain it. He, he has, like, a photographic memory for that stuff. Uh, and true, you know, Talk about an honest player. He didn't even give me a nudge or a hunch like, you know, oh, be careful. You know, none of that. Just pure, uh, pure upstanding magic citizen in a great way. But um, uh, I, I missed it. And our team went down because of my lack of knowledge at that time. So I think it was on my opponent's stuff because I didn't want to attack into it. And that was why. And it was like, no, it doesn't matter because of this. And it's like, yeah, terrible. All right. Well, let's just keep going wide here. Speaking of wide, we draw another one. 
Boom, boom, boom. Attack. What do you think of first day of class out? Upcoming set? It's okay. I've seen better. I've seen worse. I haven't seen anything that... I know there's that red card with learn on it. Everybody's like, oh, and I'm like, you know what? The uh, Ivy Lane Denizen does that already, and it stays out. And you, For that card to work and the way people are talking about it, you're, you're going to have to like have like storm mana and a handful of spells. And my point is, if you have that, <laughs> you probably won already, right? And they got a trick. They got two cards. We're hellbent. We got nothing. We're flying blind. Yeah, I should have had that queued up, and we could go over the lists here. But we'll save that for when the whole set's revealed. Cut the speculation. Like my fake set reviews, right? Everybody coming out with like, oh, you got to see this. But All right, so we win that one. Shall we go to the next one? Yeah, I don't need to use the restroom. Let's just keep, go let's keep rolling. Spoiler. <laughs> Off we go. So I'm not quite sure if taking all the blessings was the right play there. Let me know in the chat what you think there. Again, like I said, I had a Chow Mano hangover. I just remember being crestfallen of that hitting sometimes, and you're like, oh, no, terrible. Mana Tithe hasn't shown up yet. It'd be nice if the card uh, made itself known. But, oh, well. All right, here we go. We have one mana. Hey, there's Mana Tithe, but in a hand that we don't want. What does the first day of class do? I'm not quite sure. I don't have that one committed to memory. Mulligan. We have a creature. We have a land. Seem better, but we'll keep it. Probably get rid of Blessing since it's two, and we've got two of them, and we have Emerge Unscathed. It's the red one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just don't see it yet. I mean, I've seen the card, but I think... I, I say this every time a new set comes out. People are suffering from new card smell with that one. It's going to see a ton of play the first five days, and then it's going to disappear. Unless it's Learn has a ton more awesome cards that come out and, and such. But right now, I don't see it. As of March 27, 2001, at 10.27 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, let's throw this back, and we'll say done. Boop. Let's go. Thank you for that name, Chimsky. And it costs one and a red, I believe. Okay. Good to know. All right. Well, um, let's bring out our against black. Ugh. An edict. The cat's the right play. Anything else, the trailblazer's the right play. Let's lead off with the cat. That suggests they've got a two-mana spell. Explain, Shirazaman. Tell me an opening hand that that kills in turn two. All right, let's get Edict Insurance. As we attack, maybe there is a way. A little bit of a glass cannon, if I was to guess. Dark Ritual, Persistent Goblin. All right, what's the Persistent Goblin do? Oh, it's like uh, Aeokus's build. I see. Boy, that's a lot of hoping. Let's keep our stuff alive, shall we? Cartouche is definitely a play against another black deck here. That'd be funny if we can't play Blessing. We get like Chittering Rat locked out of a two drop. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Persist Goblin. That sounds like something that uh, Caleb Gannon would somehow make work and no nobody else would be able to pull off consistently. If anybody's probably going to break it, it'll be him, right? All right, now we've got backup. 
for hatred. We'll throw the cartouche on in a brave sort of way. Come on, sucker. What you got? Woo! And we got lots of edict insurance. That'd be a, maybe we should do that one next. Edict insurance. A little too on the nose, maybe, right? I'll stay back with that emergence gate, especially against black here. Five card combo. And you need two lands. There you go. Goldfish. It's one thing I've learned in a lot of the big challenges and tournaments and stuff. Consistency. You know, if you're shy on mana and, the, and then your your opponent isn't, uh, those decks always seem to do well. Just a little bit too much land and it's that consistency. Long grindy days. That is so key. All right, let's uh, let's start stacking up. We've got the power to protect it. With this combo, you can go in a little recklessly with uh, your protection spell. Let me in a second. There it is. Now, what do we favor here? Oh, we're playing it for a reason. Let's go all in with this. Say black. Does he got another one right behind it? Ooh, he might. Defile. Okay. Well, it doesn't... Uh, is it black? Now, if they kill that kitty cat, I'll be a little scared because now we will be uh, edict food, right? That's what that play suggested. Do they have it? Hopefully not. Double edict, maybe. That's what we're looking at. Boop, does he got the other one? Let's see. No! At least he could have used the old art. Well, they're at one, we're at one. Let's see if we can squeak this one out. Show me Skyguard! Give me some evasion. Oh, you jerk. All right, well, we still have the kitty cat. And now we're going to play this because if our friend Chittering Rat shows up, we'll at least have a play. Whoop. All the removal in the world. You're right. Look at that. Defile, defile. Cast down. Chainer's Edict. Chainer's Edict. <laughs> it's like, who needs creatures? Boy, he's well named. <laughs> Dynamis Kill. <laughs> and there we go. More removal in the form of creature. <laughs> Double Edict. Says super popa. Ugh, five mana. We are flooded. We'll sit back here. I like their taste in swamps. That's the one I prefer. Yeah. I remembered this time. My last bathroom break. Okay. Click slowly and carry a large stick. We'll go here with this. And then I'll say, protect this. I'll say black. This play nets us uh, one life and hurts our opponent for two. Unless they've got some of the shenanigan. Yeah, I used Merchant of the Veil in my um, new uh, commander deck with uh, Anya Falconrath. That's my kind of commander player all the time nice and fast low to the ground obviously I don't almost ever attack with her we'll say black Boop. as we draw an awesome card boy does this feel bad <laughs> I am not gonna have a chittering rat through in my day hiya staying alive staying alive Funny fact, I was there's a Bee Gees documentary I keep meaning to see. I'm not into their music, I, but you know who hasn't heard their their music. But I hear the documentary is really good. And there was some podcast I was listening to, and they were interviewing the guy that made it. And I guess they never sang that falsetto way that they're really known for, like with the uh, whole '70s craze and stuff. Monk, we're dead. 
but on a whim, like last day of, in a studio for, I think it was Donna Summer. I forget the name of it, the, but they, they sang back up and it was a big hit. And so their producer was like, let's do this whole take like this. People seem to like it. So that, and they started singing that way. <laughs> Sound completely different, obviously, without it. Ooh, Okiba Gang, Maine. Check it out. A lot of good that's doing, but it's better than a chittering rat, that's for sure. Oh, man. That is a doornail. I don't know if we can come back from this, guys. I guess we'll just do this, and uh, we hit him for one with this scenario. I'm not going to just discard it. At least he has to use removal or take one to remove it. I used to get multiple copies of the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack on vinyl for my birthday every year from a friend. <laughs> That's random. <laughs> All right, there's one more damage. Who knows? Maybe they won't uh, like to use the witches. It is cold in here. All right, we'll do this. And we'll yield through the turn. As the witch has slapped him in the face three times, fool. <laughs> That's why you're... I was wondering why your uh, Facebook uh, avatar was the young Travolta. And I was always like, okay, I'm sure there's a story there, and now I know it. After five years of knowing you, Shiraz, <laughs> if only digitally. Ha... Oh, I can't really draw a card with Benevolent Blessing. I was really hoping to do a little aha with a chit rat move there, but we'll just discard it. Well, let's put it on this in case, um, let's say red, in case I get a ethereal armor. It could help bend the balance, right? Make that one extra damage. That sucks. Pretty easy to stay hellbent with this list. But this one's going to hurt. Especially if I have to use it on there. He does it. Okay, good. I was like, playing Chittering Rats first might be the play there because I'd be stuck with Mutagenic and, and speeding up my clock by four by casting it and then by putting it on one of his creatures. But maybe a bit of overkill with an Okiba gang? Who knows? That's the one. Yeah. Well, I'm going to play it. He's got Chainer's Math behind this, so we're just dead here. He just Chainer's and then we die. But let's see. MBC with the comeback win. Good for them. Now our death speakers shall start speaking up. No surprise here, right? Bonk. Bye bye, Skyguard. See ya, sucker. Hmm, yeah, wrist is starting to bug me. I'm all about ergonomics and doing things right. I just must have slept on it funny. Feels like I've been editing for like 30 hours. Okay. Good job, Captain Removal here. Jeez, oh. Okay, so we've got quite a few options here, Governor. Hmm. I think I'll lose two blessing. I'm gonna bring in uh, three speakers, of course. I'm gonna leave those relics there. I like everything else. I think I'm gonna get rid of uh, the mana tithes, and we'll bring in another blessing here. So we've got three blessing and uh, three emerge unscathed. And a tithe going south. Hmm. Let me bring I want to bring in two journeys. It's for Gary's and such, so things don't start adding up too much. But I don't want to have too many. I don't want to I don't want to be a rat locked out here. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Huh? <laughs> Cooper the Red. 
Ooh. I'll keep our creature count high and hope for the best. Yeah, with that, that many edicts, main and removal, this might be the first one we lose today. We'll see. There's only one more after this. We can do it. Yeah, we want to play first. We'll give me more cannon fodder. I said yes. Wake up, program. Isn't this always the way of MTG Online? It's You never get the bad hands against um, matchups that are even or in your favor. It's always against the, the bad matchups, right? Mulligan this. And one creature again. Thanks, MTG. All right, well, we'll keep this. Ugh. We'll get rid of a uh, blessing. We didn't. We couldn't draw our death speakers, could we? Stay out of range naturally of uh, outside of edicts. With the cartouche draw heavy here, it'd be really cool if we um, if we draw the death speakers because we have so many cartouches it'll keep us out of edict range till uh, Captain Witches shows up. Barter in blood, bring it up, Popper Tim. I can't. I don't have that one committed to uh, memory. Is that the sacrifice two creatures for two and two black? Aha! <laughs> Who knows their magic? And that was before the chat showed up, I promise. Oh, uh, I don't know if I do this. Let's act confidently. Ha, ah, what else are we gonna do, right? I think it would be just fine. Only mono black would probably use it. Oh, this feels good, except, well, let's try it. Got to get another creature out. It resolves? Wow. Check this out. Ooh, tempting. I got to keep that emerge unscathed up. Let's rock like this. Do I go in? No, I'm going to hold back. I'm going to play like a coward. <laughs> Come on, death speakers. The first build of uh, Morio Zero Umbra, I think that's how you say the user's name that this 5 owed with. The first version of this did have all four Death Speakers in the side. This one only has three. Okay. Well, this is pretty clear what we do here. All right. I get it. We do have first strike, so that bone picker is not going to be able to pick much land wouldn't be too bad here definitely want a cartouche here boom 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 and I'm gonna keep up everything again let's scathe is key come on Creed We can always put the Sentinel's Eyes on that other warrior if the witches show up. Or just cast Journey to Nowhere. That might be the better play. Yeah. Cooper the Red's got a really valid argument there. I don't think it would be bad at all. I think the most people would play is maybe two of them. Hexproof players might complain a little bit, but it's already a bad matchup. So, alrighty. Well, we'll throw back the thing we can't play. He'll probably win because of that chittering rat. Let's go like this and attack like this. We'll go like this. Waiting for that inevitable snuff out if they've got access to it. It's a neat little discussion in the chat there. Any of my mods get the uh, quiz to work? I know I've got like two loaded up, but I'm still kind of confused on how to even make that work. Well, I guess I'll let them choose. Either get protection or I get removal. 
if I jump the gun on that, he gets both, and then I might be able to respond and kill something. So I think that was the right play. All right, look at that. We still have two creatures. Wow. They're going to let me draw the answer? Interesting. Well, let's see what he's got. I'll keep that other card of mystery so I can hopefully get in for this. Curious. Okay. Wow. Surprised that hit. All right. Here's some more edict food. Let's do it. He knows what we got. No sense in uh, feigning like we've got some trick. It's a hard-casted bone picker? Oh, okay. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, already here we are. Man, that's such ugly interface. I wish they would do something about that. Let's spread out the love. Meow. We can get back our sentinel's eyes if one of these dudes dies. Now we don't have to worry about the witches, but I think Gary's coming out pretty quickly here. And he's got a nice little journey. We do have the journey to nowhere uh, commercial coming up. I think one of my least favorite of ours, actually, but it might be because I voiced it. I've only voiced a few of them. That'll take that. That'd be funny if followed up with a cheering rat. <laughs> Much better card. Not in this scenario, though. Bye bye. Off to game three. Oops. I'm so used to winning with this list. I just wrote W last game. We lost last game, and we won this one. Now we're off to game three, thankfully. I was afraid these matchups would go way too fast. That journey feels pretty good. I'm considering losing a blessing for the uh, third emerge unscathed. Sorry, that's what this is for. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot more flesh bag marauder play. Nice little tech. I'm just going to keep it like we got it. Let's do the superstitious shuffle with these death speakers. And then we'll put one in our mana, and that will mean the difference. As I walk under a ladder with a black cat on a leash. You can cast Chittering Rats on one life and not die. It must be better. <laughs> There's the spurious correlation of the day. Woo! All right. Come on, Death Speaker, show up. Let's get a good hand. Well, we got three creatures and two mana. That ain't so bad. We'll keep this. We're probably going to get to rest right out of the gates. But that is Black's way, and they're right, I should say. I miss my buddy Nocturnal joining us, but true to his name, he's probably still sleeping. Unless he's sleeping in the chat. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Thank you for that, Popper Tim. That's pretty cool. Here we go. Stay out of the quick range. Deathblade Elite's our version of removal. That is such a good card. Remember when uh, Heroic first broke on the scene, it was like, finally, somebody got a way to consistently use that well. And that's when we want our Sacred Cat as our first turn play. But they probably have so much removal as we've seen, they're just going to pick and choose when it's best for them, as it should be. So I'm going to maximize out on Skyguard here. Our man is right. Leading us to maybe an edict-proof play in the elite next turn, followed by an armor. I don't know if I want to invest that much in it. We'll see. Okay, there's another one down. Another one. Bats dust. <laughs> Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, he was one of my very favorites. Hmm. Let me try it again. I sure wish Ob Obulite worked like Journey to Nowhere. You just threw all the permanents ghosted underneath it, so it's just off the board. Is that got the good quote? Is this the good quote one? Nope. 
Ah, <laughs> just a buzzsaw of removal here. I know, I play a deck very similar sometimes. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get out of the edict net. Thank you, little kitty cat. Showing up. Okay. Alrighty, we don't mind that. Our uh, Sentinel's Eyes are somewhere in our deck and not in our graveyard. That's about the only card I think we rely on from our yard other than the Sacred Cat. Ooh, which one do we invest in? I think we pile up on the cat here. No, but I'm going to try to spread out the love. I don't know, we've already seen so many edicts. Oh, well, that's going to make it a little easier, isn't it? Ouch. Two, four, five. He's two mana away from flashing back edicts. All right. Thank you for showing up. Death Speakers! Rawr. But now the conundrum. Uh, I guess we'll spread the love out here. Life is never a bad thing. Well, let's go. Ah. I love the old school. I think this is from Homelands originally. Such innocent little birds, and they sing a sweet song sitting in their fragile sitting on their fragile branch. Grandmother Singira, I think I'm right. Somebody look that up for me, I'd appreciate it. Homelands was my biggest strikeout financially. Um, I had like a little bit of a windfall from waiting tables or something, uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go all in on a box of the next set that comes out, and it was Homelands. <laughs> I was just so beaten down. I was like, talk about every other thing was just terrible and. Like, probably one of the worst sets ever as far as to invest in. Okay. We'll throw back our journey. My condolences, says Dreamer Stango. Well said. Oh. Two, four, five. Okay. We still are all right. I almost want to prompt Gary to come back or out. All right. We'll drop the cat. Keep some edict food out. And it is time to pile up here. Oh, let's go. Homelands. Yeah, I remember like alliances has come out and everybody was talking about, you know, force of will and it just it was already climbing like dramatically in price. And I was like, man, I gotta get it on the next set that comes out. And I jumped on Homelands. <laughs> and this is before the internet and you had spoilers and it was just a mystery. It was like the Duelist magazine might show you three cards in a set and you just kind of had to keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. But I think it was, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It was the very first set that had alternate artwork on a variety of things. All right, our mutagenic's not going to do anything there. Two, four, they're still at five mana. That's cool. Now it's six. This is getting scary. I really want to draw another zombie cat. I used to use Obsidian Alkalite there. I think that low to the ground curve means a difference, though. Definitely a better card, but in this shell, it really. Boy, is this overkill, huh? All right, well, let's cut down on some Gary math. As we're just kind of flying blind here. Wham! Come on over here. I think it's probably better to just do the damage here. Two, four, five. Yeah, I'm just going to throw it on there. Yep, let's go. Ooh, this is going to be close. Do they have the land or not? If it's a land, this game's pretty much over. Suspense. Six lands. Stay at six. Stay at six. Stay at six. There's four. Five. Here comes Gary. For two less. I wish Emerge on Skate said the opposite. Just target creature gains. I guess I could call green or something on my uh, death speakers. Six. 
Okay, that's cool. There he is, striking for two less because of our journey. Keeping him alive, though. Bringing us even. Look at this play. Are you saying Hungry Mist was not the best MTG card ever printed? Exactly, Kaczynski. <laughs> Kinsiki. Back then, it seemed pretty cool. I remember Shrink. I think it was Target Creature gets minus 5, minus 0. Oh. <laughs> I had so many Shrinks. I remember burning, like, quite a few of them at one stage. That was a pretty good top deck, I won't lie. Cartouche was just made for this. <laughs> Cooper the Red pulling the... Uh, no, pulling no punches. You know, it kills chittering rats, Cooper the Red. Dead weight. Three. What do we have here? A hollow rats? No! He'll still have to hurt himself there. Aha! Uh -huh. There's your card. Look at all the work it's doing. Oh, wait. Any spell. And we got this. Should I block here? It's coming down to next turn. Wins the game. Somehow just that just feels like bad magic. I'll let it through. Seven to six. Any enchantment. No land, no land, no land, no land. All right, there we go. Boink, boink, boink. We've done the impossible. We beat the removal machine. Best part of Hungry Mist. Woo! We are undefeated. Ah! I'm going to go get some uh, water. And uh, as we roll to our next thing, and we'll be back for our last uh, round right after this, everybody. Woo! Hi there. Hi. Nice day, huh? Yeah, finally, right? Where are you from? Your English is perfect. San Diego. We speak English there. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> where are you from? Well, I was born in Orange County, but I never actually lived there. I, uh, I mean before that. Before I was born. Yeah, like, well, uh, where are your people from? Well, my great-grandma was from Seoul. Korean. I knew it. I was like, she's either Japanese or Korean. But I was leaning more towards Korean. Amazing. Yeah. Ham Shasina. There's a really good teriyaki barbecue place near my apartment. So I actually really like kimchi. Cool. What about you? Where are you from? San Francisco. But where are you from? Oh, I'm, I'm just American. Really? You're Native American? No, uh, just regular American. Oh, well, uh, I guess my grandparents are from England. Oh, well... Hello, Governor! What's all this then? Top of the morning to you. Let's get a small tea, small tea! Double, double, toil and trouble! Mind the gap! Beware, Jack the Ripper! Bloody hell! Pip, pip! Cheerio! Hey everybody, thank you so much to the people listed here. Your continued support means the world to me as we move forward, always inventing, always doing new things. It's just nice to have so many of you aboard. If you'd like to donate, please do so at the link next and we'll see you next time. Every day at Magic's game testing facility, crack geneticists are hard at work engineering new creatures to help you annihilate your opponent. Mistakes do happen. Magic the Gathering. Beat your friends. We're back for the last round. Let's see what we're up against. One mana keep, and we're on the draw. So this is looking all right. Here we go. I like that Upright Citizen skit of the new generation. The bloody governor. <laughs> I'm sure you like that one, Shiraz.
Okay, looks like we're getting a rematch. Well, this isn't the same player, so we shall see. Let a fight with the handsome visage. Ha! Okay. Oh, do we sit back on this? Do we wait and see? Ah, uh, we gotta play aggro. That's the only reason I don't like mana tithe. Probably good for a Gary, though, once we establish some sort of presence. But for right now, we've got to establish a little bit of board. Yield. Hungry miss combos with first day of class and jittering rats. <laughs> uh, as long as they're all white bordered, right? I'm itching to burn something. Who's got the most uh, popper points in the chat here? Hey, that was a good top deck. I like seeing that. You know what? At this stage of the game, I'm going to invest in this just a little bit here. We've got mana tithe to hide something off. 6.2, 7.2, 7.4. So Razamon in the lead, round in the corner. It's about right. Yeah, I don't want that happening like every show, but by that deduction, Chittering Rats is the opposite of dead weight in your deck, meaning it must be dubbed MVP. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We should have a Chittering Rats show. A clug alters can alter it to be a white bordered Chittering Rat. All right, I got to, you know, right after this, before we quit the show, I'm going to roll to a new pep, um, uh, Parlance and Popper little thing. And uh, I'm playing this for a reason. Well, no, we've got first strike right there. Let's just let it through. That's reckless. Um, but we've got a new um, Parlance Popper segment as I roll out, hopefully from this 5-0 victory that we're hopefully about to do. It might be 4-1. But anyway, um, I was just about to do it. A little like, oh, my finger's there to, to yield, but it's like, oh, with mana tithe, play a little slower. I don't mind this. Let's do this. Get our lady on board. We've got counter magic backup. We've got a go wide plan, and we get in for one here. And unless they've got some cool trick, which we have an answer for, we'll be able to take down all of their creatures ad nauseum. You know what? I shouldn't say that. I don't remember what ad nauseum means off the offhand. I often remember. Yes. Can someone look that up and give me the definition? I'm usually Johnny on the spot with that stuff, but I'm drawing a blank. I'm guilty of saying the phrase because, just because. Booyah. There's our removal. Saka. All right. I'm going to play real slow. Real slow. Manatide. Can we make the show complete? Let's see if we can pull off the, the biggest aha in Popper. The white counter spell that can counter anything, mind you. Well, not that because he's got one backup. <laughs> but it might be referring to something or something that has been done repeated so often that it's become knowing that's what. It, yeah, I could deduce that's what it meant, but I wasn't quite 100% on that one. Alrighty. Yeah, this chittering rat's talk is quite ad nauseum. Everybody with the dictionaries showing up. Okay. Well, we don't want to give that pro black. That would suck. But we'll try to uh, chant the hell out of this. And this will be my little white bodyguard. Clearing the way and clearing out any sort of... Uh, what do you call? Ways around um, devotion? Gary triggers? That sort of thing? Cool. Attack! Boop. Boop. We will say yes. Rage I must block. Must keep smashing life. We'll still get him for six. Click slow, click slow. We're out of danger's way. I keep expecting a last second to file. Are we going to ever play this Manitide? Oh, come on! We didn't even get to play Manitide! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, I do remember that. Ad nauseum is the card that we used at the end of the uh, Stinkweed Imp Plumbing commercial. <laughs> I was brought to my knees. Stinkweed dredged my pipes. 
I don't know where you come up with those voices. Little fight, but I love them all. All right, our death speakers show up. We got to do the superstitious placement because we've never lost when we've done that. Wink, wink. Let's get rid of a bit of hand fodder. Uh, two blessings. What else? What else? What else? Want to keep all of our tricks. Creatures in, blessings out. We got to get rid of one more card. What shall it be? And a merge, maybe. Let's get rid of the third blessing. How did I do this last time? I should write this stuff down. I got rid of Manatize. That's right. We're never going to see it, folks, because I'd prefer a journey in this matchup. There we go. Bonk. You were just too quick for me, Shiraz. Yeah. I had an ad nauseum deck in Modern that worked pretty well. I forget what the other engine of it was, though. I liked March, March of the Machines with uh, the border posts. I made a, a deck like that in Modern. That was pretty fun. Turned everything on. Just whoop. God. It's always the way, man. Worst matchups, worst hands. Mulligan. At least we didn't have a lot of creatures to choose from there. Uh, double Mulligan against our worst matchup. Bonk. Uh, at least we'll keep this. I guess we get rid of two lands. Is the step even worth it here? Uh, I'm going to... I guess we keep it. I'll do this. Say done. Play the Trailblazer and hope he doesn't have an Edict. It'd be really nice if we get a Cartouche so we can at least guard it. Right now it's just going to sacrifice. All right. Well, cool. Well, we've got an answer there. Ah, quite the conundrum here, isn't it? I really think... You know what? Because we have Mutagenic right here, I think Cat's the obvious play. If he's got a Defile or Disfigure. All right. Yeah, I got to get a haircut. I'm getting way too long here. Cool. Our stuff's going to live. That's pretty cool. I guess we just slow roll this. Get two creatures out. We'll go crazy next turn. I'll just play this. We'll use a little bit of tempo there, but we do want to save it for the uh, Lagora Band Trailblazer, so we'll keep rolling like this. We still can protect it, unless they drop another swamp from a defile. This figure we're good against. Oh, the will o wisp Swamps. That's the one my son Sapphire likes so much. Okay. We'll get rid of this obvious little play there. And that'll lead to a Cat Cartouche next turn. That'll be kind of a no-brainer. And we'll have first strike, so we won't have to worry about too much. Or will we? This only grants Vigilance. First things first. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we keep that in the yard. Because if we do this, we'll have insurance against Edict. And we can still get first strike with this. I'm just going to start thrashing here. I could wait for Skyguard, but I'm going to use my Skyguard as just Edict bait here. So we smash on in. Ain't waiting around to get it discarded, that's for sure. Booyah! I am surprised how good, uh, I think it's Paraka's Libation. Um, the Sacrifice and Enchantment our Creature is in Commander. Really liking that. Well, we're going to lose it anyway. Let's uh, get some benefit out of it, right? Let them see our Sky Guard, which will just turn into Edict Food. If we top deck a uh, land, we'll obviously drop the Cat and the Sky Guard. Just use them as fodder, but 
might as well get the plus one one counter on that band trailblazer and smash for the rest boop it's a race six to seven as it sits man it's cold in here it's pretty warm outside but I got this place entombed what are we getting are we getting new toys okay let's bring out the cat and we'll bring out this so we smash for seven you That even a double defile won't bring this horseman down. The centaur of Madman. Hey, we did it! 5-0 again! Is that three weeks in a row? Two weeks in a row, at least. With heroic. Super low to the ground, and even against decks that are crazy uh, removal, as we've seen in the last two rounds, we're still able to punch it through. Yeah, pretty, pretty sweet little list. There's so many ways to build this. Um, honestly... My build of Heroic is quite a bit different, but, you know, the metagame is shifting right now. These are the decks that are 5 0 and it's for a reason. Um, Paulo Cabral is one of the better players on Magic Online, I think, and uh, he runs off, I think he runs four of these in his last 5 0, so make sure to check out his build. But um, you, could, you could go with the uh, Obsidian Alkalites. You can do anything you want, really, but um, with the mana curve this low and stuff, I found I, re I really like this kind of new angle of just going super low. And look, we're not even using four of these. Um, hello, wake up. Interface, there we go. Um, we're not even using four of these. We're using three, and we're not even using any uh, Seeker of the Ways. It's, uh, it's about as low as you can get. And as you saw, the mana feels really spot on at 17 with two uh, cyclers here. So I give this one a thumbs up. I don't know if you even need Relic, but I'm sure there's going to be matches where, you know, go up against some fog decks and stuff. It's just nice to have access to, but you're not going overkill with it and such. Um, yeah, pretty cool little list by uh, this player. I won't attempt to uh, <laughs> pronounce the name. Um, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining me. I'm going to be uh, brand new things coming up um, on an old thing, but new. And uh, we'll see you next week. I don't know what I'm going to play. If you got a cool list and you want to throw it our way, propaganda at gmail.com. But until then, I'm out of here. I'll be online all weekend long because my family's real busy and I'm uh, just lonely man playing magic. So come join me, y'all, if you want to join the clan. Um, hit me up on magic in the next few minutes and I'll send you an invite. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me and hopefully we'll get a white bordered card burn next week. Adios. I can give you every assurance, Mr. Rooney, that Ferris is home and he is very ill. In fact, I debated whether or not I should even leave him. Grace!